we are exploring. We are in Marked Tree, Arkansas again, and in part two of this two-part series, I'm going to show you the lock and siphons here at Marked Tree. And I promise you, if you are not an Army Corps of Engineer guy, and you're not from Mark Tree, you're going to see something you have not seen before. Because this is something unique in the United States from the size and the efficiency. You have to go on a dirt road here on top of the levee, but it's all worth it. It's about six, seven miles out of town north of marked tree and the lock and siphons are two different things the lock was built in 1926 but it did not really work out and the problem was widespread flooding we're going to see the remains of the lock in a minute in 1939 they solved this problem and they is the United States Army Corps of Engineers by installing siphons. Here in the front, that's part of the old lock system that has been abandoned and there we are coming up and what you see are the three siphons that cross the levee. And if you don't know how a siphon works, don't worry closer to the end of the video I'm going to show you even if you're not interested in physics you might find that interesting to connect the road there's an old a hundred year old bridge crossing over the siphons and we want to see how old and worn out the wood is in a little bit here at the end of the bridge you can turn right into a parking area look at this water this is the business end of the siphons and this is water rushing out rushing out and there's no end to it what these siphons do is they move the water from the flooded area on the other side of the levee to this side of the levee to relieve flooding of the San Francis River and they're moving it this is not a pumping action this is physics at work here is the suction end of the siphons that is protected with a fence to make sure that not any debris or animals are sucked into it and spewed out at the other end. Look how worn the wood is on this narrow bridge that's just wide enough for one car to pass over. Yes, here is the suction end again and I am not sure if you are able to see that this flooded area we're looking at here is at a higher water level than the area over here where the water is moved out and this is a natural flow controlled by physics pumping is only necessary to initiate this flow so how does a siphon work in this example a liquid is transferred from vessels a on the left to vessel b on the right which are connected by a pipe initial pumping is only needed to fill the pipe below the level of vessel a on the exit side of the pipe indicated as point one as long as the liquid fills the exit side of the pipe below the level of vessel A at point 1, the flow will continue. When 
vessel A is drained to the level of the pipe entrance at point 2, the flow will stop. This process is powered by gravity alone, no continued pumping is needed. A lock can be applied anywhere on the pipe to stop the flow. Here we are on the other side of the siphons at Mark Tree, Arkansas, and there's a little control station that controls air valves in order to control the level of water that is moved from one side to the other, that is siphoned from one side of the levee to the other. And this is no swimming hole and this is not a good boating area as well. There is so much water coming out that you have these dramatic pools where I don't even know how to describe this. This is thousands of gallons every minute being moved from one side of the levee by the siphons here at Marked Tree. This is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, by the way. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it.